Picture four, catching the ox. Today you've chanced upon it, so long hidden in the wilds, but you can't keep up with its high spirit, and it won't give up its love of sweet grass. Even more willful, as wild as ever, if you want to tame it, you must lay on the whip. With your last ounce of strength, you take it. But stubborn and strong, it won't be broken. Now it suddenly climbs to high ground. Then it descends to vanish deep into mist. Thinking only, ox, ox, don't let go, just this is the real fetter. Just catching sight of the ox is not enough. You must get a tight rope on it, tame it, and make it your own. The Zen priest Ikkyu wrote, With just one glance at the figure of Miss Original Face, standing there, you will fall in love with her. You can't say that you don't know this lady, Miss Original Face. Miss Original Face is a pretty woman and you must get a look at her. If you catch just a glimpse of your own true heart-mind, that is, your eternal self or Buddha nature, you will become so absorbed in your meditation, you won't be able to stop. That's the frame of mind you must get into. Today you've chanced upon it, so long hidden in the wilds. Sentient beings are from the beginning, Buddhas. From the very day of our birth, right up to this very moment, each of us has been endowed with Buddha nature. But none of us has been aware of where that ox has been. Not merely from the day we were born, but from before the very beginning of the universe, 
right up to the end of the endless future. The ox of the heart-mind has been hidden somewhere in the bush. And now today, we have finally found it. Until now, we have only heard stories about the ox called Buddha Nature. But today, we have at last come face to face with it. But you can't keep up with its high spirit. Now that you've caught it, you see that the spirit of this ox is exceedingly refined. Far and away above our level, there is no way you can keep up with it. Yes, you certainly did catch a glimpse of it, but now it has gone off somewhere and disappeared. This thing called spirit is an individual thing. Only a sparrow can understand the spirit of a sparrow. Only a hen can understand the spirit of a hen. And only another fish can understand the spirit of a fish. In this cold weather, perhaps you are feeling sorry for the fish, poor thing, for it has to live in the freezing water. But don't make the mistake of thinking it would be better off if you put it in warm water. That would kill it. You are a human and there is no way you can understand the spirit of a fish. This is a good example of, but you can't keep up with its high spirit. A mind of thoughts and attachments can't possibly fathom the spirit of that ox called original face. With your head full of thoughts of good and bad, pretty and ugly, even should you seek out the spirit of the ox of Buddha nature, there is no way that you would be able to recognize it if you saw it. and it won't give up its love of sweet grass. The grass which this ox eats is not the common grass which you can find just anywhere. 
The grass which the ox of fundamental wholeness eats is not found in mountainous areas like Roko or Arima, much less in urban areas. Don't deceive yourself into thinking that you can feed at your desires and attachments, your passions and self-delusions. The ox of fundamental wholeness will run away at the mere smell of them. If there is even the slightest whiff of impurity, the ox won't touch that grass. It won't give up its love of sweet grass. Zen has to be just this daily life of ours. Our actual life, just as it is, must be our Zen. But the ox of fundamental wholeness detests even the smell of the actual. It is strictly pure. It hates the world of desires and attachments, passions and self-delusions, and will trot right off to the mountains. even more willful, as wild as ever. That ox is tough, solid muscle. Although you've managed to get a rope on it, it shakes itself free and runs away. At the first unguarded moment, you will head back to the mountains you may have caught it, but it is no easy matter to break it and finally make it your own. If you want to tame it, you must lay on the whip. If you want to tame that ox so that it will be compliant, well behaved, and always right by your side, then you must hold it on tight rein and lay on the whip. Unless you are continually mindful and on guard, never letting go of Buddha nature, then the ox will run right back to the mountains It is a ridiculous distortion if you mouth sayings like the passions themselves are enlightenment as if you were enlightened yet when you meet a woman you embrace her or when presented with alcohol you indulge in drink. There is no Satori there.
with your last ounce of strength, you take it. Only when no wish to drink arises, even when you are faced with alcohol. Only when no desire to touch a pretty girl arises, even when you meet her. Only then will you finally take the ox. You have exhausted all your intellectualizing and finally reached the point where there's nothing left to think about, nothing left to say. You become a great fool and all that thinking, thinking, thinking disappears. Only when you get to that place can you get hold of the ox. Sometimes you hear it said, in the old days, people died and lamented not being able to live. Today, people live and lament not being able to die. In the old days, people did meditation and rid themselves of discriminative thinking. They would stand up without realizing it go out without realizing it and finally they got to become like complete fools then they agonized over how to manifest from that place the great living energy of zen in immediate action these days however People agonize over not being able to just die cleanly, once and for all. Always something remains. They do not really die. It is like killing a snake, it's still twitching. Your mouth is going, Moo but your tail is still twitching. You are not completely dead yet. So long as you do not first attain the great death, the Samadhi of Mu, then you can never catch that ox. But stubborn and strong, it won't be broken. However, that ox is wild and strong and will run away at the very first opportunity. It is no easy task to tame its power. It is no easy task to break its wild power and subdue it.
Now it suddenly climbs to high ground. Then it descends to vanish deep into mist. The high ground here refers to that place without self-delusions, where there is neither self nor world. It is compared to the clean, fresh highlands one finds around Mount Fuji or in the Japanese Alps. Once in a long while, we can get a brief glimpse of this state. During Zazen, meditation, you may have had the experience of thinking, ah, this is really good. This must be the Samadhi of Mu. This is just like it's supposed to be. No delusions, no enlightenment. This feels so good, this must be it. But as soon as you stand up, it all disappears. The ox disappears again deep into the mist. While sitting in the zendo, you may be thinking, this is really it. But once the session ends and you walk out the door and go back to work, then it completely vanishes. Without getting hung up on whether you can or cannot do it, go straight into the Samadhi of Mu. Even if it is only for one second or for one minute, even if it is only for five minutes. You may say, in order for me to get into just five minutes of Samadhi, I have to really sweat for three hours to clear all those interfering thoughts out of my mind. But suffering three hours for a mere five minutes, that too is all right. Those five minutes are five minutes of eternity. Those five minutes are five minutes of the eternal Buddha. This is what is meant by one inch of sitting is one inch of Buddha. It is not a matter of sitting with the physical body. If in your five minutes you cut everything off and die, then you are inch by inch becoming a 16 foot Buddha. thinking only, ox, ox, don't let go. Just this is the real fetter. This is a very interesting poem. If you are holding the rope on the ox's snout, thinking you mustn't let go, you are in for a great struggle. 
the bonds of desire and attachment, thinking and discrimination are not easily cut. So too, the rope attached to the ox of the heart-mind. The idea that you must not let go of the rope. This thought itself turns into a binding fetter, a source of suffering. You should not be half-hearted about it, but once you've seen the ox of fundamental wholeness, you're afflicted with torment. Taming and training that ox is no simple matter. Waking and sleeping, it causes you anguish. Yes, you certainly did catch the ox, but keeping a rein on your heart-mind, just as it is, is not an easy task. Whether you do or do not attain Satori is secondary. Rather, you should be pleased that you have the good fortune to have come into contact with the teaching of Zen in the first place. Whether you do or do not attain Satori will resolve itself naturally. I leave that up to you. It isn't a simple matter. There is no way to know when and where you are going to be blessed with great fortune. Through sound, you gain entry. When and where that will happen for you, we cannot know. That means you cannot relax even for a moment. You must apply yourself day and night without pause in continuous samadhi. You do not know where or when you will encounter that sound through which you will gain entry. That means you must always be in a live and taut state of mind. It is most important to maintain constant samadhi. If a balloon is blown up beyond its limit. It can't help but burst with a bang. If Mu totally fills your body, you can't help but explode. Keep that in mind and enjoy yourself while you continue your practice.